Hello, hello. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hi, hello. How you doing, Anna? Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? I am very good. How about yourself? Uh, I'm okay. You're okay? You're only okay? Yes. yes. My okay. day it was normal and I relax because the, the weather is better now. <laughs> it, well, yeah. Well, you know, today it started out pretty nice and sunny. And, yes. then, and then in the afternoon it started raining a little bit. And so throughout the day, it was nice, and then it got wet. So I would say that also it was a good day because of that. So you, you're right, you're right. Yes. Bienvenido, Jose, welcome. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Nice How to you see doing? you again. Nice to see you too. How you doing, Joe? How was your day? Busy uh, day, a lot of work to do. Nice, nice. When there's a lot of work, that is always good. Sometimes, but uh, I have uh, uh, some troubles, and and the, the work. Oh, okay, okay. So in that case, maybe not such a good day. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard day, actually. It was a hard. All right, all right. I feel you, Joe. I feel you. Mireya, ¿qué tal? How are you? Hello. Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good, and you? Uh, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Rodolfo, Joe, Jose Rodolfo. Hello, how you doing, my friend? Okay. I saw that. I saw that. Okay. All right. Elisa, welcome. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. <laughs> Hello, I, I think we're going to get started. Um, tenemos varias cositas que cubrir, and I don't want to rush. I know that sometimes you guys might, might get that feeling that I'm rushing, and it's because sometimes I think that we, we try to cover too much, and then at the end, we start kind of rushing everything. So I'm, I'm going to try not to do that today. Um, now, just because we are rushing, it doesn't mean that we are, missing, we are missing information. So don't worry about that. It's just that I'm going a little bit faster. Yeah? Le ponemos un poquito más de velocidad, but all the information is pretty much the same, right? Except I speak a little bit faster. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Como que... Como que me, me he tomado una Coca-Cola o un cafecito bien fuerte. And then, you know, it starts to get really, really fast. So, sorry about that. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. Day number, what day is it today? Four. Yeah, day number four. All right. So, where are we supposed to be on the platform versus... Where are we supposed to be with the classes? Let me tell you. Let me show you, actually. So you guys know that we only give classes Monday through Thursday, correct? Yes. Did they told you that? Did they tell you what our schedule was going to be? A little bit, maybe. OK. So we do our classes Monday through, through Thursday, and you guys get a long weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then we see each other again on Monday. The class, um, the module, ends in December. Now, it's a little bit different from what we see here, because even though in the platform, you guys have one whole month, which means that you guys finish on December 19th. That is not the case. This one, this module is going to finish like around December between the 10th and the 14th, I, I believe they said. So we're actually going to finish about a week before December 19th. 
So if you think about it, right, it, it's quite some weeks away. It's actually three weeks away from that date. But no vayan a tomar esta fecha como el último día para terminar las cosas en la plataforma. Esta fecha es un poco, men, ¿cómo es mentirosita? ¿Cómo es mentirosa? Uh, quiero que piensen y quiero que vean como la fecha para terminar diciembre 10 y a más tardar tal vez el diciembre 12. Así que ojo con esa. Quiero que no, todos nosotros nos pongamos de acuerdo que para, el, para diciembre 10 ya hayamos terminado las cosas en la plataforma para no tener ningún problema. Porque diciembre 19 es la última fecha para los administradores del módulo, no para los estudiantes. Así es que ojo con esto, ojo con esto. Eh, también les, les voy a confirmar, eh, les voy a confirmar porque el día de hoy estuvimos hablando de eso, pero creo que no, no lo mencionaron clase por clase. Así que eh, lo voy a confirmar hoy en la noche y se los digo mañana. Bueno, no, perdón, se los digo el lunes. Pero solo mantengan eso en mente. Ok, eh, son cuatro semanas y si ustedes pueden observar, eh, son cinco secciones. Hay personas que dicen, ay, la primera semana tuvimos que haber cubierto todo en la sección 1 y todo eso. Y luego en la sección, bueno, eh, sección 1 y quizás la sección 2. Lo que ocurre es que si terminan las secciones muy rápido, la sección número 4 y 5 son un poco, en ciertos casos son unos, salen por veces un poco cortas. Si pueden observar, la sección 5... Es, es bien cortita. La sección 4 también es corta. Eh, la sección 3, normal, ¿verdad? Porque tiene dos selecciones. Eh, sección 2, de igual manera, tiene 10. Y la sección 1 es, creo que es la más grande, que tiene 13 lecciones. Ahora, ¿a dónde debemos de estar nosotros? Bueno, vamos en la, vamos en la primera semana. Y nosotros ya terminamos. Se puede decir que... Terminamos la sección número uno y vamos entrando a la sección número dos. Así es que vamos exactamente a donde deberíamos de ir. Si ustedes ya avanzaron y ya llegaron y ya cubrieron sección dos y ya llegaron a la sección tres, pues, pues well done, ¿verdad? Y está muy bien que ustedes lo vayan moviendo, se vayan moviendo. Ahora, sí les quiero recordar que los training virtuales, o bueno, el classroom training, va un poco más despacito. Entonces, para los compañeros que ya van bien, bien adelantados, les voy a pedir que nos tengan un poquito de paciencia, ¿verdad? Eventualmente lo vamos a cubrir todo y si nos queda tiempo durante los primeros módulos para cubrir alguna pregunta de una sección muy, muy adelantada, pues con mucho gusto lo hacemos también. Así es que ojo con eso. ¿Cómo vamos con nuestra plataforma de trabajo? Vamos muy bien. Porque el día de hoy vamos a cubrir la mayor parte de la sección 2, que quiere decir que para la siguiente semana vamos a terminar la sección 2 y entramos a la sección 3. Y vamos a trabajar la sección 3 en la semana número 2, que nos va a dejar la 4 y la 5 para las semanas 3 y 4. Así es que, everybody, we are a ok A ver... Con eso, ¿quiénes de ustedes ya se metieron a chequear su progreso? Me, ¿Y cómo van? teacher. You guys, ok. ¿Y cómo van con su progreso? Are you guys happy? Yes, I'm happy. You guys are happy, ok. Excellent, excellent. ¿Quiénes de ustedes ya adelantaron a la sección 2 o 3 posiblemente? In my case. Okay, did you go to section two or section three? Uh, I start to the middle exam. Oh, okay, okay. So that one is at the end of section three, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, good for you, good for you. Now, the midterm has a, a you got to be careful with the midterm because uh, some questions require you to put a dot or a comma. So be careful with that. Uh, once you put it, it's still going to give you, even though the answer is correct, it's still going to tell you that the answer is wrong. So just double check. Double check on the spaces. Double check on the dots. 
and double check on the commas. Okay, just to make sure that you have the phrase correct or the answer correct. And then that way you get a correct answer. So uh, the midterm was doing that. <laughs> I, I noticed that it was doing that today. So uh, please be careful with that. Okay. Okay. Um, section number one, we can say that it's pretty much complete. And then we start off in section number two. And we actually saw a little bit. Comenzamos a ver un poco de las personality types, right? How did we use them last time? Well, we were talking about describing a person's personality, so an adjective. Do you guys remember some of the words that we used to describe a personality? Or a person, I think that's a word, yeah, personality. Do you guys recall? Yes, the nervous. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, you got it. So we had, you know, arrogant, we had rude. Okay, so this time around, we're going to go back into personalities, but we're going to go back a little bit deeper, right? Because this time around, we're going to talk about personality types, and we're going to talk about what job. I don't know if you guys remember seeing that on the videos, if you guys have gotten there yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. But that's what we're going to cover. So we're going into section number two, and we're going to have personality types. We're going to have gerunds. We are going to try to get to comparisons, but I don't think we're going to get to comparisons. I'm going to really try to get there. Um, if we can get there, hopefully we can do like the exercises as well. So, you know, let's hope, let's hope for the best. All right, so where did we leave off? Who remembers the last thing we saw last night? <laughs> Who remembers? Do you guys recall? talking about the clauses. Do you guys remember the type of clauses and the one that we had covered? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay. Dependent clause, a dependent clause. Okay. And then the last one that we saw was adverbial clauses, okay? And then we started talking about that. We started talking about the subject, the verb, and it being used. For example, when you guys say, I like it, or I love it. And then the clause that we were using, which was with time and the word when. So then you would follow it up with, I like it when someone gives me a compliment. And so that was an example of a subject verb with it. And it was the famous clause with it and when. And so the complete clause looked like this. I like it when someone gives me a compliment. I don't like it when a child won't listen. And then so that's when you guys use it the most. All right, so once we completed that, we started going into a quick review. And actually, we, I think we, we got around to using the live worksheet. And what I wanted to do was cover the knowledge check 1.113 with you guys from the, from our, uh, from our website. Let me go ahead and click on that real, real quick. And this was something, and I believe, uh, I believe we talked about it yesterday real quick. And so one of the things that came up was the amazing world of apps and how you had to read 
And based on what you were reading, you had to answer the knowledge check. And so most of the questions, las preguntas que salían, estaban basadas en el artículo que uno tiene que leer o tenía que leer cuando usted estaba haciendo el knowledge check o parte del knowledge check. And one of the first questions that we get is, according to the article, what are some common uses of apps? And so they gave us a list, you know, you could find a new restaurant, you can wait yourself, you, you can look at a restaurant menu, you can check the weather. These were the four options that we got. However, only three of these were right because you could not, well, you can't wait yourself yet on your apps, right? En mi caso, yo quebraría mi celular. Demasiado pesado. Entonces, so, and then we have question number two, which was at the time in which the article was written, what was true about the app Angry Birds? And so the answer for this one was that it had been downloaded by more than 50 million people. And once again, they give you wait yourself, it began selling in 2008 and it sold for $2.13. But the answer was it had been downloaded by more than 50 million people. And then question number three, which was according to the article, why are the apps so popular? And the answer was apps are popular because they can be used almost everywhere. And so this is an exercise for you to read. And it's actually reading comprehension you read something and then we come back and we ask you what did you understand so i have an exercise for us i want us well i need for us to read this little story and i have some questions that we can answer as a group and I was hoping that we can incorporate more of these stories. And I, I promise you guys that I'm going to try to find smaller stories, smaller stories, uh, you know, so that we can get used to them and then get, you know, larger stories. Now, why do you guys think, ¿Por qué creen ustedes que English comprehension or reading comprehension is important to conversation or to a conversation in English? Because we, oh, thank you, thank you, Joe. Uh, because we had to learn how to connect our ideas. There you go. You got it. Okay. I need you guys to be able to understand what the idea is that's coming your way so that you can formulate your ideas and throw them back. And they have to be in a certain format or else the other person is not really gonna catch what you're talking about. So this is a, this is a story, I, I really like it, I like using it, um, it's, it's pretty easy. And I want you guys to take, um, I'm gonna give you guys what, between two and five minutes. At two minutes, I'm gonna ask you if you guys are okay, and if you guys are still reading, then I'm gonna keep going up until five minutes, okay? So I'm gonna ask you guys to please read this story and I want you to keep in mind and try to remember some key aspects of this story because I'm gonna ask you questions about it. Okay, are you guys ready? Everybody ready? All right, here we go. Starting two minutes right now. Thank you. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, two minutes are coming up. Do you guys need more time or did you guys, are you guys okay to continue? Okay, to good. Waiting, waiting, okay. How's everybody doing? Need a little bit more time or ready to go? Are we ready? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. So when you are reading something, right? The idea is for you to read it to yourself. And there's two types of reading. You could read it in quiet mode or you can read it out loud if you're, you know, if, if you're alone at your house. When I'm in my house and I'm alone, I like to read it in, in a you know, maybe not a loud voice, but I, I, I don't read it to myself on, in my mind. I think it's easier for me to understand it. So sometimes what I do is if I have a story that I really like, then I start to read it, you know? Like in this, this particular case, um, one day a group of mice decided to call a meeting to see what they could do about the cat, which is always trying to catch them, right? And then, so I, I try to read it that way. So it, it helps, right? I don't do that when there's too many people around, but when I'm by myself, I do do it. And I have a lot of books that I can try them on. So here we go. Are you guys ready for my questions? Yeah. All right, so let's try it out. All right. The mice in the console. Who can help me with this one? What is a council? Is it a party? Is it a question? Or is it a meeting? A meeting. A meeting. It's a meeting. A meeting? Everybody agree? Yes. Is there yes. anybody that doesn't agree? Yes, teacher. All right, all right. Let's try it out. Oh, you guys got it. Nice. Okay. All right, all right. I see we're going to have to make these harder. Who had the console? The mice? The mice and the farmer? The cat and the mice? Mice. The mice. The mice. The mice. The mice. The Is there mice. anybody that doesn't agree with that? No? All right. Let's go. Well, all right. There we go. 100, 100. Nice. Way to go, guys. What was their problem? They didn't have enough food. The cat wanted to be friends, or the cat tried to catch them? The cat tried to catch them. Nice. All right. Who gave the idea for a plan that would work? A the young, young mouse, a the young cat, mouse. or the older mouse? The young mouse, I the heard everybody. Mouse. The older mouse. <laughs> <laughs> the young, the young one. All right, so then we have, what was the good idea? Put a bell on the cat's tail, put a trap out for the cat, or hang a bell around the cat's neck? Hang a bell, and the... hang a bell around the cat's hang neck. A bell around the cat's neck. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I click on the wrong one? Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Put it, put, hang a bell around the cat's neck. That was it. Ah, I'm so sorry, guys. 
you guys miss you guys miss that because of me. Sorry about that. The mice thought that this idea was exciting, stupid, or excellent. 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 Boy, oh, see, let, let me try to click on the right one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, who asked? Who will tie the bell on? All the mice, the younger mouse, or the older mouse? The younger the mice. Older mouse. The, the older mouse. The older the mouse. The older mouse. I heard the older the mouse a few times. Okay. Um, yeah, the, old. the older mouse. And the last question: What is the lesson of this story? Mice are stupid animals, and cats are smart. Don't propose good ideas. It is easier to give ideas than to carry them out. Can you repeat me? Sure. What is the lesson of this story? I don't know. Are the mice, that the mice are stupid animals and cats are smart? Don't propose good ideas. Or it is easier to give ideas than to carry them out. It is easier to give ideas. Yes, it's easy to it is give ideas. Yeah, you guys got it. You guys got a 100 on that one. So way to go, way to go. Well done, well done. Okay, so this is a reading comprehension. Little story, what did we learn from the story? And then quick little discussion with some questions, okay? All right, we're gonna try to get that going and if you guys did advance if you guys did manage to cover if you guys did if you guys did manage to move forward and got into the personality type the video they talked about something a little bit different right it wasn't just the adjectives to describe a personality these personalities had to do with jobs. This personality had to do with the type of person that you are. And so in the video, they talked about, well, they asked, you know, how many types of personalities are there? And who remembers? I know it's on here already, but ¿Quién se acuerda de cuántas personalidades? De los compañeros que ya vieron el video. En la sección número dos. Six. Six, right? Six, I guess. Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aquí estaba, aquí estaba. Okay. So there are six types, and they mention them one by one, or they're going to mention them one by one. And mm -hmm. they start off with artistic, mm -hmm. conventional, enterprising, mm -hmm. investigative, mm -hmm. investigative. Investigative. Ah, I'm sorry. Investigative. 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 Yeah, that one me costó un poquito. Realistic and social. Okay. ¿Y qué tienen que ver estos? Bueno, your personality type will let you know what job you are going to look for and what jobs are going to be good for you or the best fit. How many of you guys in this moment tienen trabajo? You guys have a job. I, I, have, a, I have one job, right? I, I'm an English teacher. Aquí estoy con ustedes en la clase. Aquí estoy, gracias a Dios. Okay. In, in my case, I I am in refuge, and okay. I am a teacher, and I, am, I do the, how do you say, the lifestyle over with my friends. Okay. I work with that, and doing, uh, driving my car, and doing, uh, okay. uh, uh, carreras or viajes. Oh, 
And I saved that. Okay, okay. Well, that, that's, that, that, that will count definitely. Ahora, ¿cuántos de ustedes han tenido un trabajo y no se han sentido bien en ese trabajo? Sí. <laughs> we don't feel good. You know why you don't feel good at that, at that job or, or, or performing that duty? Because maybe your personality type doesn't go too well with what you're doing. And so the video that you guys are going to see will tell you where do you go in or where do you fit? And it tells you what would be the ideal job for you. And I'm going to talk about artistic because this is one that's, you know, personal. I would categorize myself as being the artistic type. No porque tengo talento para pintar, ¿verdad? Pero fíjense que me ha funcionado mucho, ya que me ayuda, bueno, me gusta tener trabajos a donde me dejan expresarme de la manera que a mí me gusta hacerlo. No solo de expresarme como yo quiera, pero a que, me, a que alguien me pregunte qué ideas tenés y que sean el famoso out of the box. Y pues a mí siempre me ha gustado tener así ideas bien, bien locas afuera de la cajita y pensar un poquito diferente o pensar diferente a los demás. Entonces, por eso es que una de las cosas que te dice es si tú vas a ser, si tú caes bajo la personalidad de artístico, te da una lista de trabajos que tú te tocaría o estarías muy bien y te sentirías muy bien. Y yo creo que la mayoría de nosotros buscamos, we look for jobs where we feel happy and that we feel comfortable doing. So, my advice is for you guys to take a look at the video and try to figure out where do you guys fit. So, si ustedes entran a Google, you guys can also do personality test. And you guys can do a personality test. And so, lo único que les recomiendo es que hay diferentes exámenes for personalities, que te dan diferentes tipos de, por ejemplo, te dicen que no hay seis, que hay cuatro. Hay otros que dicen que hay nueve. Y lo que ocurre es que estos de aquí o se hacen más pequeños para incluir una, un rango mayor o se duplican o se hacen más. Entonces, solo tengan cuidado con el personality test que ustedes va, vayan a hacer. Pero sí les digo, hay unos, hay unas compañías, bueno, la mayoría de las compañías hacen personality tests antes de que ustedes lleguen a tomar una entrevista, por ejemplo. Porque lo que quieren saber es qué tan cerca están del de trabajo que ustedes van a estar desempeñando. So, personality test, and most of them will ask you questions, and you get to see, you guys can answer them. Let me answer this one real quick. And then just to give you guys an example of how it works. You guys take the little test. And then once you guys do it, it's usually it's real quick and you get only a few questions. And then once you complete the exam, it tells you where you fit. Let me see here. It said it was 16 questions, but I'm, I'm not counting them. Let me see. Whoa. Let's try to go there. I think that it's, no, it's, it's, it's a few more questions than I thought. Bueno, eh, ustedes hacen el examen y les va a salir una respuesta. And then it tells you where you guys fit into. Um, let me see, we can say how many. 
personality. How many personality types? Y en muchos de los casos, you guys are going to get different answers, right? The one that we're doing here is una que es un poquito más, más veterana. And then so it narrows it down to just six. And then based on that, they tell you if you are an artistic, what type of job you would fit perfectly into. Um, esa es el último examen que se hace. O el, ¿cuál es? And I think this one has to go into section two. Yes, that's personality types. So you guys, so we can see it real quick. Y así le va a salir el video. And then it tells you about the personality. Now, my recommendation is for you guys Look at the video, pay attention to it, porque también te va a decir the jobs that are perfect for you. Have you guys ever heard about the personality types? O cómo se ocupan para identificar si, if you are a good fit for your job? ¿Alguna vez han hecho ustedes un examen de personality para un, algún trabajo? No, not yet. All right. No, no. All right. Okay. No, yeah. sure. So, so let's say you guys get to a level of um, intermediate or advanced English and you guys want to go apply at a certain call center. There's a few call centers that do the personality test. Now, they don't tell you that it's a personality test. But I want you guys to keep in mind the type of questions that they ask. Um, if you guys ever find yourself doing a test and in that test, for example, you guys get a lot of questions about how do you feel about this or how do you feel about that? Or if you agree and how much do you agree? Usually what they're doing is they're already doing the personality, the personality test to see if you can, it's like, it's like if they're screening you. So, por eso es que nosotros lo estamos mencionando también, because the personality type, the personality type has to match a certain, I want to say, a certain profile. Eh, si tú estás aplicando a una plaza de servicio al cliente y te hacen el personality test y tú no tienes el perfil correcto, no te agarra. Simple as that. So I, I want you guys to keep that in mind because it does come up. Y de mi parte, lo que ustedes se tienen que recordar es how many types they are. ¿Verdad que son seis? And what are they? Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Y hay un examen, o te dicen ellos, where do you fit in? Y tú tienes que decir, bueno, you know what? I fit under artistic. So you have to do a self-assessment. Y luego te dice, ¿qué trabajos son los mejores para ti? Así es que ojo con esto. All right. Personality types. My recommendation, look at the video. Pay close attention to it because it comes in handy. ¿Alguna pregunta que tengan acá? Everybody good? All right. Okay. La siguiente o la siguiente parte de las secciones que estamos viendo se comienzan ya a enfocar un poco más en ciertas palabras que, se, que vamos a estar ocupando. Para nosotros, el siguiente es el famoso gerund. Se escribe geruns o se pronuncia, bueno, en español va a geruns o geruns. Y en inglés se pronuncia gerunds. Y ustedes van a decir gerunds. O cuando alguien les dice a ustedes gerunds, a esto se está 
Uh, this is what he is talking about. So what is a gerund? A gerund is a group, um, bueno, it, it's a noun formed from a verb and all of these gerunds end with ing. Super fácil. ¿Se recuerdan ustedes haber escuchado que alguien les dijo formen una palabra ocupando verb y agregando la ing? Verb ing. ¿Se recuerdan que alguien les dijo eso? Yes. Alguna vez. Ok. Yes. So now, now, some people say, oh, I need you guys to do some verbing. Porque es el verb and el ing. But that's, that's not technically correct. What they're asking you to do is to create a gerund, which is adding ing to a verb, right? So it's a verb plus the ing. It's a gerund. What are some of the examples? Well, swimming is an example of that. Running and drinking. What did we do? We took the word swim, and now we turned it into swimming. We turned the word run, and now it is running. We turned the word drink, and we converted it to drinking. That is called a gerund. ¿Estamos bien hasta aquí? A ver, preguntas, yeah. preguntas, preguntas. It's okay. Everybody okay? Yes. Mm, ya, ya, yes. ya tengo una pregunta. Sí, sí, sí. A ver. Eh, yo siempre me he confundido con eso porque okay. yo no entiendo si el gerundio es aparte del tiempo continuo. O sea que, ¿cómo voy a saber si alguien me está hablando, o sea, en tiempo continuo o está haciendo referencia a un gerundio? Nunca entendí eso. Vaya, vaya. Lo que pasa... Lo que pasa es que cuando tú le estás diciendo a alguien, bueno, en el caso, en el caso que tú estás diciendo, el gerundio, the jaren, what you are trying to say is that it's happening now. So if what you want to say, si tú, si tú lo que quieres decir es que está pasando en este momento, then that's when you use the jaren. Because you're telling somebody Tú le estás diciendo, ¿qué, ¿qué está haciendo José? Bueno, él está comiendo. Ajá, ¿cuándo está comiendo? O sea, usualmente alguien no pregunta eso, ¿verdad? Porque si, tú, si alguien te dice, está comiendo, nosotros automáticamente en español, we assume de que está comiendo ya, ahorita, en este momento. So, same thing goes when you apply the gerund. So it is a form of past, bueno, it, it is a form of a tense. Actually, it is a tense, right? Porque lo que tú estás diciendo es que está pasando en este momento. Por eso, si tú te fijas, todas estas son exactly what you are doing right this minute. You are, what are you doing? You are swimming. When? Nadie te va a preguntar when, porque ya estás implicando de que you are swimming right now. You are running. When are you running? Right now. Ahora, por favor, solo recuerden que sí se puede ocupar el ing o el, en este caso un gerund with time. Si tú tienes una cita, por ejemplo, Kerry, si tú tienes una cita a las 8, Tú puedes decir, my boyfriend and I are going to be running at 8 p.m. En ese caso, tú lo puedes ocupar. Puedes ocupar esa palabra. Puedes ocupar running. Porque lo que tú estás diciendo es, tengo una cita a las 8. Y si tú me buscas a las 8, ¿qué voy a estar haciendo? In a running. I am going to be running. Correct. Uh, en ese caso, sí se puede ocupar. So, swimming, running, drinking. These are all examples of gerunds. Y 
no estás confundida, Carrie. You're right on. It is a form of a tense. Solo que te tienes que recordar que el tense que estás haciendo es el de en este momento. What am I doing right this minute? And so that's when it comes in and that's when we use it. Y si tú te fijas, mira, thinking, playing, painting, eating. Son gerunds que se pueden ocupar. And that are telling people of something that you're doing at this moment. So we're good with that. Terry, ¿qué tal? Está bien. Está bien. Gracias, profe. <laughs> sí. Ok. Pero ahora creo que te voy a confundir un poquito más. Porque the way that we're going to use the gerunds or the way that the gerunds have been used in the video are a little bit different. Si tú te fijas cómo hicimos la, la frase. The phrase that we're using is a little bit different. Carefully painting the fence. Tenemos un adverb. We have the gerund. And then we have the direct object. Entonces, la, el formato de la sentence que hicimos, it's a little bit different than the way that I was explaining it to you. Por eso es que instead of being a tense, se conoce directamente como un gerund. Pero, pero, pero hace exactamente lo mismo. Así que don't worry about that. Lo único que tenés que poner atención es cómo se está ocupando en la sentence y en qué lugar se está usando. So, let me give you guys a little bit more information about that. So, lo primero. En English se dice gerund. All right? Gerund. Yeah. Hay personas yeah. que dicen gerund or gerund, and it's, it's okay. You can pronounce it that way. ¿Para qué sirve? Well, it is a noun formed from a verb. Y lo que hace is it usually ends up with an ing in a very specific position in a sentence. So, ¿cómo lo vamos a ver nosotros? Bueno, There's a, there's a couple of ways to look at it. If you guys are using the subject of a verb, then we have, or the example would be, visiting New York is always an experience. And you guys see how visiting is at the very beginning? Y lo que se hace aquí en este ejemplo es que la palabra, la palabra visiting is the subject of the verb is que está aquí. Okay? So you guys can do it this way as well. I will be visiting or visiting New York is always an experience. Y tú lo puedes dejar así nada más. Is that the object of a verb, for example? I love visiting New York. En este caso, si ustedes se fijan, visiting está un poquito más a la mitad. Porque visiting is the direct object of the verb love. I love visiting New York. Now, there is the object of a preposition. I surprise them by visiting New York. En este caso, visiting is the object of the preposition by. I surprise them by visiting New York. Y luego está el subject complement. So you could say that these are the four ways that you can use these. My highlight was visiting New York. Visiting is a subject complement in this sentence. And it is completing the linking verb was. And it also changes the subject. It renames the subject. And it makes it a subject complement. My highlight was visiting New York. 
So four ways that you guys can use the gerund and you can use it as the subject of a verb. You can use it as the object of a verb, the object of a preposition or a subject complement. And how does that look? Bueno, if we see the breakdown, we have subject of a verb, object of a verb, object of a preposition, and subject of a complement. Running is a good way to explore. We have the gerund and we have the verb. The subject of the verb. Object of the verb. He likes. The verb goes here and then running. He likes running. Object of a preposition like of. I am thinking of running. Gerund. And then the final one as a subject complement, which is my new hobby. Uh huh. What about the new hobby? Well, my new hobby is running. And it just totally renamed it, right? They, it took the whole portion and it renamed it. So estas son las cuatro maneras en las cuales ustedes pueden ocupar un gerund. And you guys will see these coming up in section two. Así es que ojo con estas, ojo con estas. Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the, when we are using the gerund as the object of a verb, uh, we are going to use uh, for example, non action verbs like uh, like or love? Well, in, in this particular case, you can because what you are doing is you're taking that verb and you see how here it says likes. He likes running. So, yes, you can use it that way. If you were going to use something like that, if you're going to use a word like like, then yes, you can use. Now, it doesn't have to be running. Remember that it could be pretty much any word. He likes swimming. And it still sounds very good. And actually, that's, that, that would be the correct way of saying it. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay. All right. Teacher. So, yes, ma'am. The gerund have some extension? It, well, it, it depends on how you are using them. So, for example, you know how we were talking about the word swimming and how sometimes it is called verb plus ing? And some people say that it's verbing because they don't, they don't really want to use the word gerund or the sentence or the way that you're using it on a sentence does not require for you to call it a gerund. And it's only because it's a verb plus the ing like, you know, swimming. So let me, let me see if I can, if I can show you a little bit more about that one here. Let me see here. I don't think you need, there is, I don't want to say that there's an exception, but what you have to look for is how is being used. And so, for example, if you are taking a noun in this particular case, and it is the subject. If it is the subject, then it has to be the very first thing that you started off with. In this particular case, running is good for your heart. Now, if you are using a subject, for example, to be, 
and then you are incorporating other parts to it, then it is not recognized as a gerund. It is only recognized as a verb plus the ing, que es el que les estaba mencionando que era el, el famoso verbing. So, let me see if I can find that. I, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to confuse you guys. Yo, by, so, so, para dejárselos un poco más claro y no querer crear la confusión. Okay. Ustedes van a ver. Depending on how you, how you are formulating your sentence. Okay. You guys are going to see two types of identifiers. Alguien les va a decir que es un verb plus the ing. Por ejemplo, I am working today. I don't know if you guys, let me put it here. I am working today. You guys see that? So here we start off with the verb to be. And then we have our verb plus ing plus a complement. All right. So this is what happens. If you guys are formulating a sentence like this, then what you're taking is the form to be, I am, and then you are incorporating the verb work, and all you're doing is you're adding the ing, para lo que, para lo que mencionó Katie, que era el tense de... I am doing it right this minute. If you guys see a sentence like this, then here, you guys will not see the word gerund, even though it is. Sino que se reconoce como verb plus ing. Así, así se reconoce. Because the sentence and the way it's formulated requires for it to be just like that. However, if you guys see a sentence that's a little bit more complex, for example, he hates waking up early. Aquí, waking up or waking no es el verb plus ing. Aquí se tiene que ocupar el término gerund because it is using a direct object in order to provide information. Así es que solo lo, lo que tienen que hacer ustedes es tomen nota de que en sí, en teoría, agregando la I, la N y la G, se categoriza como un gerund, pero depende de la sentence que tú estés ocupando, it's either going to be verb plus ing, or it's going to be a gerund on its own. Y esa es la regla que te explica o que tratamos de explicar para que ustedes puedan ocupar palabras como running at the very beginning of a sentence. Running is good for your heart. Aquí en este caso, porque running is the subject, that is a gerund. El que se está ocupando, no el verbo plus ing. So you guys have to look at what's going on with the sentence para darle la categoría de gerund or not a gerund. Aunque, aunque en teoría, ¿verdad? La do, los dos casos son, son lo mismo. No sé si los confundí más. Los confundí. Sí, un poquito. A little. A little bit. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Carrie, you're right on, though. You're, you're right on. So... Eh, el caso que usted preguntó es, how about if I, if I say something like, eh, ¿cuál fue el que dijimos? 
I like, I think it was, I can't, now I can't find it. Let me see. I understand, I went too far back. Okay. Aquí está. Okay. Do you remember how I used I am? I am, and you guys see the word thinking here? But here, the word thinking is not categorized as a gerund, sino que es la palabra running, la que se está ocupando. Because there is a proposition after thinking and before running. So it's right smack in the middle. Entonces, esta de aquí se vuelve el verbo plus ing y la segunda se convierte en el gerund. And if you guys can see, I have the I here, which is the verb to be. So this is an example of another rule coming into a sentence and completely making changes to it para aplicar la ley del gerund y cómo vas a ocupar o cómo vas a decir la palabra running. And so when you guys are, if, if you guys only see, for, for example, in this case, I am thinking, and there's nothing else that follows it, then thinking is not a gerund. I am thinking. Se convierte nada más en el verbo plus the ing. So you guys have to see where is the word located. Is it at the beginning because it's the subject? Is it at the end? because it's using an object? Does it need something else to help it out? Like, like, like a preposition, in this case, of, or is it a subject complement? Is it complementing a subject? In these cases, particularly, it becomes a gerund. Y se le va a reconocer por lo que es, que es una gerundia. Más o menos? Kind of? Maybe? I had, I had an exercise for you guys. That, that way maybe we could practice it a little bit, but I think we're going to have to leave it for tomorrow. Lo dejamos aquí y tratamos de ver cómo, lo, cómo salimos de esta gerundia el día de mañana. Okay. Sí, ¿verdad? Sí, ¿verdad? All right. All right. All right. All right. So, le recomiendo, le recomiendo. I recommend two things. Section two. And mañana hay clase, teacher. No, mañana no hay clase hasta el lunes. Okay. Así que disculpen, hasta el lunes. Lo voy, lo voy a dejar en suspenso hasta el lunes. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Nos quedamos así. Les recomiendo sección número dos, porque ahí están las dos cosas. Está el personality type y están las gerundias. Así que, ojo, ojo con eso. Los vemos el lunes. See you Monday. 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 See you Monday.